Hello, my name is Agnes. I'm from the Toolset team and I'm going to show you how you can create a custom archive for your blog page using the Pro theme and Toolset plugins. So this is how your blog page in the Pro or also in the X theme looks like by default. And this is the same page but this one uses my custom design. Now let me explain how this new page differs from the old one. First of all, all the elements you can see here are fields of my choice. So in this case, I decided to display a smaller feature image, the post title, and I put it on my feature image. Of course, I have some standard fields such as the post excerpt and the read more link and some post metadata. But please note that I also use some custom labels here. What is interesting in this example is the usage of custom fields. I included the read time, which indicates how long reading to expect. This is one of my custom fields. And here you can see a small patch that indicates whether a post has a video embedded. Note that this icon is displayed conditionally, uh, which means that only posts that actually have some videos embedded will get this little icon. Let me quickly switch to the backend and we'll see how the fields present in the backend. So these are the two custom fields. I also have one more, but I won't display this map in my custom archive. In my layout, I also use some custom CSS. Some of my classes come from the pro theme and some are totally new, my own ones. So to sum up, the whole design is entirely under my control. And now let me show you how you can build such a custom archive using the Toolset plugins. The page that displays your blog posts is an archive in WordPress terms. And how your archive looks like is determined by your theme. So now I'm going to go and replace the default archive with my custom one, which I will create from scratch. I'm going to use the Toolset Views plugin to build my custom archive. So you go to Toolset, WordPress Archives, and create a new one. You give it a name. And here you select which specific archive this new one will be used for. So you can use the same layout for different types of archives. I will use mine only for the blog page. My choice is reflected here in this section. I can change it later and apply this layout to other archives if needed. I want my post to be paginated, three per page, so I'll stick to the defaults here. And I scroll down to the loop output editor which is the place when you actually design your archive page. Let's click the loop wizard. I want the whole layout to be entirely under my control. So I'm going to use the first option, uh, unformatted output. In this step, you select the fields that you want to appear in your archive. I'm going to add a feature image first. If you click the edit button, you can change the default settings for your field. So let's select the medium size instead of displaying the image as a thumbnail. Definitely every archive needs to include the post title as a clickable link. So I'll choose post with the link as well and the post excerpt. And here again, let me change some of the default values. 
I want to display, let's say, 50 words in my excerpt and I want it to use the default read more link, so I'm gonna leave this field empty. Okay, for the time being, let's use only these three fields and see what we got thus far. Before you proceed, make sure that you check this checkbox here. What it does, it will group your fields in the so-called content template, which will open in a separate editor so that you can easily edit the fields later on in one place without any further distractions. Okay, and now the wizard advises me to scroll to the content template, which I, ju which I just mentioned. So, uh, so I'm gonna click it. And as you can see, all my fields have been grouped here. They were inserted as short codes, and now you can easily wrap them up in some additional HTML tags. So for example, let me add h2 tags to the post title. Okay, let's save our changes and see what we got on the front end. So I'm gonna scroll up and use this little pen icon here to preview my new archive on the front end. Okay, all the elements are appearing correctly. For each post, we can see the fields we've chosen. To sum up, this whole layout is controlled by the loop output editor here, but a single post entry is displayed here in the loop, and all the fields are grouped in a content template, and you can edit them in a separate editor below. So this editor here represents a single post in the loop. Okay. Now let me add some styling to have some space between the posts. If you want to stick to the pro themes, design and styles, you can use some of its CSS classes. So you can go and visit one of the other archives, for example, post by month and see what classes have been used here. So I'm going to use the inspect feature of my Chrome browser. And as you can see here, the single post entry uses the entry wrap class, which adds some cool borders with a shadow. So I'm going to wrap my fields into a div and use the same class. You can also use this handy CSS editor below to add some custom CSS rules. For example, let me add some bottom margin. Okay. Let's preview our layout again and see our archive on the front end. Oh, okay. I, I think it looks pretty decent now. Now I'm going to show you how you can add custom fields to your blog posts. This time I use the toolset types plugin. I'm going to go to toolset, post fields and create a new group of fields. Let's give it a name and let's add two fields. First, video included. This one will indicate whether a post includes a video. So it's going to be a checkbox field. Okay, let's store yes in our database when the value is selected. And now let's add the other field. Let's call it read time. And this one is going to be a number. So choose number as a type. Let's save the changes. And you can also click this edit button here and say that you want these fields to be displayed only for your regular blog posts. And now, if you go to your post and select one of your posts for editing, you will see these fields. Let me check this post to indicate that it has a video embedded. And let's say it takes three minutes to read the whole post. 
OK, now let's use these fields in our archive. Let's add the read time below the read more link. So I'm going to position my cursor here and use the fields and views again. Look up the field and insert it. We can bold it. Let's save the changes and see our front end again. OK, the fields appears correctly. So now let's display the video batch. I uploaded the video batch to my media library. Let's check its URL and copy it. And now we are getting back to our archive and we'll display this as a HTML image tag. So I'm going to use this image button. OK, let's check our front end again. As you can see, the video icon appears for each and every post why we want it to appear only for posts that have the video included field checked. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get back to my editor, select the image and wrap it in a conditional statement. So I'm going to use this conditional output button. My field has been defined in the toolset types plugin. So in the first drop down, I will select types field. Here I choose my field. And here I'm setting up my condition. I want the field to display only if the field value is yes. OK, as you can see, my image tag has been wrapped in some extra short codes. And when you visit the front end now and refresh the page, you'll see that only the posts that have this field checked got the batch. And this is actually what we've expected. Now I'm going to go and add some CSS to put the icon on the feature image. So I need to add an extra div and make it the reference point for all the fields inside it. So I'm going to set the relative positioning here and the absolute positioning for all the fields inside. The featured image will be placed on the top left corner the batch slightly above, so I'll use negative values. I'm also going to put my heading on the future image. So I will add some additional CSS rules. Let's check the front end again. OK, I think it looks pretty good. Now your turn. And you can go and add some post metadata, for example, a link to the post archive by author and categories. You can also use some custom labels. To do so, you will use the fields and views button again, but this time use post fields. OK. In this tutorial, we have built a custom archive for our blog page with our custom fields. What we have covered is only a tiny fraction of what you can achieve using Toolset. You can also add a custom search to your archive or display all your posts on a Google map. I hope you've enjoyed it and thank you very much for watching.